everyone. Just so glad for those who tune in and you know if you like us, do that like. And uh, we'd like to hear from you. We are available. We are a church from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, because I know we go different places in the world. You may not know where we're from. And our desire is that we would share the love of God with you and that we would share the wisdom of knowing Jesus Christ if you do not know him. And he has not made it difficult. He came to die for us that we could have access to the heavenly realm, that we could have access to his Father and himself and the Holy Spirit and that our sins, or those things that we stood against God for, would be forgiven. Because sin isn't just the things that we do wrong. Actually, we were born in it. We were born separated from God. That is the sin. And, and to get rid of sin, that Jesus died for it. That we can now, through him and through the sacrifice of his blood, come to know God. It's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. I just want to talk about uh, his way because there's so many ways, you know, and the Bible says that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That, that doesn't leave any, uh, he's not being very, uh, what's the right word, um, caring what he says, you know. He's not concerned about insulting anybody. He said, I am the way. I am the truth, and I'm a, I am the life. And if any man comes to the Father, they have to come through me. So to come to God the Father, you have to come through what Jesus speaks and what Jesus has said for us. That access to God, he has given us freely by his love for us. And Proverbs 14, 12 says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but it ends in the ways of death are the ways of ruin. And Jesus Christ came that we would be able to hear the Holy Spirit and get led and directed in our life, not just by our own intelligence, not just by, you know, our looks or, you know, in our, you know, money or any of those things, or our family. No, he came because there's a way that has life to it. He is the life. And the way is a custom, a mode of action, a road, a course of life. So that way that seems right to the man, things that we may choose, things we may be involved in, it doesn't mean they're evil things, but it's not the perfect road that God has for your life. So it seems to be straight, to be right, to be pleasant, to be prosperous, but God's always got a greater plan. That's why we have to hear him. That's why we have to know him. That's why we have to meditate on the word that gives us life. And Isaiah 55, 8, in the New International Version says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, the Bible says. God's speaking. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. And my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and snows come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, Flourish, so it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word. He's saying, listen, even as the rain comes down, even as it gives life, and even as life begins to, you know, things begin to grow, he says, that's what my word is like. That's what my word, it brings life. Even in desert places, it brings life. So is my word that goes out from my mouth, not this mouth, his mouth. It will not return to me empty. You know, scripture says that, he says there, whatever my word goes out to do, it will accomplish. It will accomplish. How much more do we need his word above our knowledge? But will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out with joy and be led forth in peace. <laughs> Doesn't say you're going to get all worried. It says you'll go out with joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst in songs before you, and the trees of the field will clap their hands. It's because joy. You know, the rain has come on the earth. The spirit has come on the earth. There is joy. There is life. And we are connected to that life. Not only is his way higher than ours, but his way comes with a guarantee. Part of that guarantee he says, what he speaks will happen. We just read it. What he speaks will happen. His way will bring joy. His way brings peace. You know, even in a time of turmoil, there's lots of turmoil, you can have peace inside of you. 
It makes all the difference. And if you have peace inside of you, you draw people to you because the world is not peaceful. People are anxious, people are afraid. What a great gift of peace. And Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. <laughs> the Prince of Peace. His way saves us from pain and snares. I can't tell you how many times I've not heard or not listened or been sidetracked and it causes pain. God does not cause you pain. Our directions, people around us can cause us pain, but God is not the one who causes you pain. And, and like I said, you may not be doing anything necessarily evil, but a way or your way has limitations. It, ha it has limitations. God comes in, pushes back limitations and opens doors that could not be open, could not be open. You know, many of you know the story of Caleb and Joshua in the Old Testament and how they were supposed to go into the promised land, Canaan land, which was the promised land of the Jews. And them and 10 other guys went in. The 10 came back and gave a bad report, terrified of the giants. That were, and they were literal giants. They just weren't tall people. I should have you come and stand beside me. That's, that's a tall person. <laughs> Our post guys, like, about that time. They were bigger than him. They were bigger than him. And they were probably uh, occultists. So that it wasn't just their size, it was actually the spirit. And uh, they came back and gave a bad report. And it's interesting that in the scripture, it gives the name of all the 10 guys. And they're never mentioned again. And we do, no one memorizes their names. You know, no one does. But everyone who reads that book, uh, that, that wonderful uh, account, remembers Joshua and Caleb's name. Because they, and that's, that's the way it should be, that we remember the good report. And they said, come on, God said it, we can take them. But because the people got discouraged, they went their own way, and they wandered around that desert for 40 years until that slave mentality was lifted off of them. And the ones that went into the promised land, they were trained warriors by that time. They knew how to fight. They knew how to take ground. And they knew they trusted God to feed them every day in the wilderness. Amazing stories. I mean, they did good sometimes, they did bad, but God finally got them to that promised land. And then, because the, the people got mad at them, you know, many times the people got mad at them, <laughs> we're gonna stone them, like it brought us here, at least we had some good things in Egypt. They did not have good things in Egypt. But it's so interesting that when we're in a tough place, we kind of look back and see, it probably wasn't so bad back there. You do not remember. You do not remember what it was like back there. And so you're looking, and there's no such thing as, you know, side sliding in the kingdom, either going back or forward, back or forward. I, I remember a time when I, after I got spiritually reborn and I was having a tough day and I ended up cleaning out my closet and it came across a, a journal that I had written in. In my day, it was called a diary, but it was a journal. And so I started looking through the journal and I started reading what I had to say. And it was a journal that I read, that I wrote about before I was serving God. And I'm reading this stuff and I'm thinking, what an idiot. But anyway, but I was reading this stuff and the sensation of not being saved, of not knowing God, of not walking with him came upon me reading this thing. And I thought, and I, I just repented to God. I says, God, I, I'm sorry, I forget what it was like. I forgot what it was like. And even in the worst day, I know you're with me. Even in the worst day, you've got victory for me at the end of it. So praise God. And that's his way, that's his way. And we forget, we forget. So they're, they're complaining about going back to Egypt and they were slaves in Egypt. And before we know Jesus Christ, we are slaves to the world, to the world's system, to the world's thinking. But when we're delivered by the Spirit of God, by the blood of Jesus, we come into a new place and we come into a, a Canaan land. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> and really, who's a better boss? Who's a better boss than him who calls us? 
And, and we can be so deceived, we can go into deception, I think is the number one thing that Satan uses to get us off track or to stop people from coming to Jesus Christ because of that deception. He can use deception. But when we're obeying him, I tell you, it doesn't mean it always feels good to obey God, but the end result is different. Because he says that he knows the end from the beginning. We only know the beginning of stuff, but he knows the end of it. Oh man, I'm sure you're like me. There's times that, that you wish you had stayed still and listened to his voice. But he doesn't come down on us. He just says, okay, get up. He says, the righteous fall, but get up again. It's not the falling, it's the getting up again. That's what makes you a believer. So if you feel like you've fallen today, get up again. Love on God, let him love on you. Get up again. And if your way has been all screwed up, get on his path again. How do you do that? You spend time with him, you begin to pray. You read Proverbs, you start to meditate on the word. And then you begin to believe God to lead you. You begin to believe him. Say, God, I thank you. You're going to lead me through this. I, I'm lost here. Even though I might be successful, I know I'm lost. Help me to find that way. He's very faithful, very faithful, very faithful. And, and you know, <laughs> next, next time I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the power of wisdom and all this. Because he so wants us to be wise with his wisdom it's greater than the smartest guy on earth, his wisdom. And it's available to every child of God. So I bless you today as a child of God. If you're not, come on in. Jesus is calling you. He's calling you. Come on in. Let him come into your life. Change your life. Say, start talking to him, asking his help, asking his direction, because he is faithful to those because he loves us. Amen. God bless you. Amen.